He was unfiltered with me. He told me everything that was on his mind, his wants and desires. So yeah, I'm a little scarred. I absolutely understand not all men are like this. So put the claws away. Um, and in the video, I explain that. I get into that. Cause I know how y'all, I know how you girls like to tussle. Before anybody's like, why did you make a YouTube video about it instead of just putting it straight on TikTok or Instagram, da, da, da. You see how long the story is. It's long and it's not, he didn't just say one thing to me and then that was it. No, he did a whole bunch of stuff and you'll see. But yeah, and on top of that, on TikTok, I can't say what he did, even if it was just like, right, like if I just gave you a two second video and just said this, this, and this, y'all were still gonna ask for more. And on top of that, I commented what he said and some, and y'all still have been asking for a video. So here you go, you got a whole movie. So this was my friend, I adored him. We spent so much time together. Um, at that time in our lives, we were in college, um, we were working at the same job. But yeah, I look forward to anything, like doing anything with him and like, just, you know, hanging out, going out, yada, yada, yada. But I think at that time in our life, we, we definitely were in a lot of, we had a very toxic home situation to both of us. And I felt like at that time, we really thought that in order for us to get out of this toxic home situation or not necessarily get out of it, but the solution to us being um, depressed or having anxiety, this, that, and the third, um, was to get in a relationship with somebody just to uh, feel that love and kind of fill that void that we didn't have, especially with our parents. And that's really what it was, is that he, both of his parents um, are just, not the best. And and he lacked a lot of love in his life. And I think a lot of times when people lack love, they go out and seek it from um, other people. And they might not know the right way to do that. And I felt like at that time, I had a little bit better knowledge than him on that part. But we were still kind of on the same boat of thinking like, once we get into a relationship, our lives would be so much better. Uh, us being stressed out about school, gone. Uh, us being stressed out about our home situation, even though we need to move out, gone. Um, and that was kind of where we were mentally. <laughs> in our relationship, we literally helped each other out with everything. Um, we would stay back and help each other on our shifts at work. Uh, we talked about any and everything up under the sun. It wasn't an issue like uh, in our friendship, especially in the beginning, but it started to dwindle into <laughs> an issue because it started to become a conversation every single day. And he would tell me all of his wants and his desires with people unfiltered. And it, you don't want to know that about any and every, everything that somebody is thinking of what they want to do when they're alone with somebody that they like. And that to me, it was like, okay, you know, every now and then we could talk about it as friends because that's just what we do. Like, oh, you told me you were out with such and such last night. Like, how was it? But you don't go in full blown detail. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? And especially if I've, I've expressed to him multiple times, hey, I'm uncomfortable with this. Da, 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 or Like, I don't, I don't even know all that. He still would do it. But I was not the only person that he did this with. Um, it was other people that, uh, you know, when you become friends with people, you introduce them to your other friends. So, you know, like everybody's kind of knowing who's who. Because I hung out with him all the time. We went everywhere together. We talked about everything. So it just got to the point where like sometimes he would go meet up with, you know, some of the people that I would introduce him with uh, to or whatever and talk about that same stuff with him. I was like, hey, can we not talk about this? And he'd be like, why? Why not? And I would literally read books. I would, I would watch movies. I would try and find anything that we could talk about to get it off of that conversation. And he would literally throw it back to that conversation. Anything that he recommended literally went back to that. Like any movie, um, any book, or he never recommended books. Did he? I don't remember. But um, any and everything was just about that one topic. 
And it was just, I was just like, I can't believe that you, I remember it was one movie he suggested to me and I was like, oh, so did you like the movie? He was like, no, I just fast forwarded to the parts where the couple were, you know, together all the time. And I was just like, so you didn't, you didn't, you didn't watch the parts where they fought, fell in love, all of that. You just watched when they were intimate, only the intimate scenes. And that's it. And he was like that with every single movie. Everything. That's all he talked about. And the other issue was is that he would come to work and he would start to try to show me the videos that he would watch in his alone time. His me time. And I'm just like, I was so like outdone. I was like, can you not show me that? And it was getting so bad. Like we're at work and he's talking about it out loud and customers are around. I'm like, I'm not about to lose my job because you can't stop talking about this one thing. This is not okay. And he literally did not understand. And I really drew the line that like one time it was a kid in the room and he just said something and something that was so inappropriate, so out of pocket. And I'm like, no child should hear that coming out of anybody's mouth, especially at that age. Like, I'm like, this kid is like six or seven. Like, what are you, why are you talking about this? And they're literally two feet away from us. Like, I, I was just done. I got to the point where I would walk away from him. Um, I would leave if we were hanging out. I would immediately leave as soon as he started talking about it. Um, but it had just got so bad to the point and in my life, everything just was getting really horrible at home. Um, it was the summertime. So school wasn't so much of an issue, but I had a lot of issues like financially uh, getting through school. If you can hear that vent, please ignore it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had a lot of issues, a lot of issues. And my mind was getting clouded. Um, I decided to do like a me day. So I went to a hotel. I know you're like, if you're having financial issues, how are you affording that? Girl, I put on the card de la credit and it took me like a year and some change to pay it off because I was in college and didn't have that much money. But I needed this day. I absolutely needed it. I needed time to reflect and I needed to get out of my home because it was just bad and I didn't know what to do. Um, so I spent the night at a hotel and I went shopping, I went out to eat and it was downtown at the time. I stayed at the Hilton, if you know how much that room was, girl. But you know what? I was, I was, I was on my last drink. <laughs> I needed it. But in that time, I reflected and realized that I was like, in order for me to get out of this home situation, I need to stop trying to seek out um, somebody to come and save me. And that's what it was. It was like, if I get in a relationship, all of this would be absolved. And that's not the case, because I'm thinking like, well, if I get a boyfriend, da 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 then I can go stay at his place when I'm feeling flustered. And you know, it'd be nice to be around somebody that, you know, truly loves me and treats me kind and well and this and that and the third. But I had that realization that nobody was gonna save me but me out of my home situation. And that it wasn't a matter of just a relationship. I needed to remove myself and get out and move. So I needed to work more. I needed to juggle school and, you know, make more money and this, that, and the third. And I came to him with all of that, that solution. We sat down and had a talk because I really wanted this friendship to work. I did not want to lose him, but he kept talking about this one thing all the time. And I'm, and I think it's just like his lack of love and his toxic relationships in his life, with his, especially with his family, He's not realizing how that's messing up his relationships and just in general with anybody and everything and how it's just conflicting and clogging up his mind Why he's walking around depressed. And seeing him made me realize that I need to get myself together and I did not want to continue to live my life like this. So I told him, sat down, and the way he looked at me, the way he looked at me is like he lost me as a friend and he knew I was going to move on. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, I told you all this. This is the game plan. We, both of us, are going to rise up. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna get past this. And he just could not do that. So uh, after that, it was another time that me and him were talking, and I thought we were done with that. After I set the boundaries, like, please stop talking about this so much. We can talk about it every now and then. 
but it started getting bad again. And I just left, like I left him. Like I just walked away and went on about my day. And he repeatedly, he sent me a long manifesto message. And it was, I was just like, are you serious? And basically it was like, I feel like we're distancing ourselves, this, this, and this, and this, and this. But he sent it through Snapchat. But in Snapchat, you can like, at that time, you can like unsend a message. I don't know how, but he did it. And like, I was starting to read it and he literally deleted it. And then I'm just like, I can't even, <laughs> he wouldn't text it to me or nothing like that. So then, um... He ended up calling me so much on my phone. Mind you, he's at work. He was having an inappropriate conversation with me at work and I was done. I was off the clock at that time. We switched off. I was like, I just left. I'm like in the middle of his conversation. I was like, you've lost your mind. And he continued to call me on the work phone. The work phone. I was like, I'm not about to argue with you over the phone. I didn't answer. He kept calling me, kept calling me. I had to block the work phone's number and contacted one of my other friends because I just did not know what to do in that situation. And that's when she told me, she was like, yeah, he does talk to me about that stuff all the time too. And I was just like, I felt bad because I'm like, I introduced him to her. And that's just, you know what I'm saying? That's just kind of, that's kind of messed up. Um, but yeah, he continued to do that. And then after a while, when he, I guess he was calling so much. He was calling so much, I couldn't do anything on my phone. Um, and I couldn't text nobody else. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So um, long story short, a few hours go by. I'm not even downtown no more. I'm like on my way home at the time. Still living with my mom and my aunt in the car. He sends me a text message. And he was like, Sister Soldier, I'm going to see you tomorrow. And then we can have this discussion. He act like I stole from him or something. And I was just like, I can't believe he went through these limits. And when we got there, I told him the same thing over and he was upset about it. And he was asking me, he was like, why can't I talk about this stuff with you? And I was saying to him, like, it's not that you can't, it's just, you. it can't be every single conversation. That's the issue. Um, so long story short, as the, the year started to begin, we still work together. Um, it was definitely other little plot, other little spots in our relationship that was, he was very flaky on. Um, we, we did try and plan to move into a place together beforehand, just talking about it before all of this happened. And that wasn't going to be a no, especially after this situation. So I was kind of out of a roommate situation, you know, kind of loving myself. Up. But anyways, going back to it, once the year started, he continued to do things to mess with me. He stopped talking to me. We, he would, He's the person that relieves me from my shift at work, right? He would come in late, so I would have to sit there. Uh, and I'm like, I'm still going to take my lunch break. Um, but yeah, he would come in there late. Even though I'm like, I've been sitting at this desk, I haven't eaten anything. He knows my home life. He knows my situation. So he knew that was going to irritate me. He knows I'm very punctual. And that I will always get on him about being punctual. Like, you need to do this to better yourself. Anyways, um, he would do that. And then he, um, I didn't know that he blocked me on everything. Like, all social media platforms. After so much time, he was going to other people in the office and telling them uh, stuff about me and this, that, and the third. And he wasn't understanding why I wasn't talking to him, but in all actuality, he wouldn't say nothing to me. Um, and uh, somebody told me that, yeah, he blocked you on Instagram, this, 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 and this, and this. And he was like, he wasn't understanding that um, it wasn't working or, or whatever. I was like, because anytime he was texting me before this whole situation happened and it was kind of going downhill, all he would text me about is that one thing. And he would text me about people he was interested in and what he was, you know, doing with them. He would even go as far as to send me diagrams of like, like his bad uh, pictures. Like, I don't even know how to explain it to you, but like he had one bad situation with somebody and he was grossed out by it. But I'm like, but you still, it was so bad. He would go to strangers' homes. I'm like, you went to, like, I don't know why he wasn't thinking that nothing could happen to him, but, like, he would go to strangers' homes, he would hook up with them, this, that, and the third. I'm like, this is, 
this is getting out of hand um, and it's unsafe but uh, and he would tell me every every detail and it was just it was terrible but anyways he wasn't understanding that and so much time had went by so many months had went by and he was really nobody would like at that job nobody cared anytime I would say something about the situation they would kind of just roll it off their shoulders and act like it wasn't that serious um but it is a big issue if he's talking about inappropriate topics to me at work um but everybody acted like it wasn't a big issue this down the third um until I got to the point where I was fed up I would not wait for him to relieve me from my shift it was a certain time that he was supposed to be on time and I would just leave so that meant the front desk was unattended so he started getting in trouble for that and then now they were like you know what and that was the big thing is that I was trying my best to keep that situation from work uh, for a long time and just keep it professional. But he kept bringing it to work. And I'm like, literally, you're upset with me because you cannot talk about this one thing with me every single second of the day. That's absurd. But getting straight forward to the point here is that, yeah, he it grossed me out. It made me not like him. It, what I thought to myself was not all men are like this that is I absolutely understand that not all men are like this but the men that I have seen in the last couple of years show the same characteristics as him as a friend and the other thing is, is that I was so distraught and hurt <laughs> I was I was I'm like I really this is my friend and I really needed my friend especially in this time um, and he's not listening to the boundaries that I'm setting. I'm communicating with him and he just isn't comprehending it and trying not to care. And then he's also blurring the lines of our friendship. Is that about blurring the lines of our friendship? And it feels like almost the, as much as he's talking about these intimate topics, it almost feels like he, we're in a relationship because sometimes he's saying these things and he's saying well i want to do this with somebody but he's looking me dead in the eye while he's saying it and i'm like it almost feels like you're saying this to me like this is what you want to do with me and it's just it's just too much like even if he didn't mean it for i'm like why are you so obsessed with specifically talking about this one thing with me why can't we talk about anything else and it just i don't i don't know that just didn't make sense to me but yeah i just i was just traumatized and like so what i reflected from that was that anytime a man shows those characteristics that just tells me that he's only here for one thing when it comes to me um and like i said no that's not every single man but the majority of the men that i have met in the last couple of years that's why i haven't been interested in anybody so um and i could just tell and i think that listening to what he was saying and that was a big thing that was a big thing is that he wanted a relationship with somebody he said he wanted a relationship a really good one but his actions did not reflect it and i think that was another type of man that i was noticing um i could tell um, by just him and how he was i can tell any other man is like that like you you feel like you want a relationship and you want to be committed but your actions say otherwise like you really just want one thing um but you might not even know that you know what i'm saying and you hurt a lot of people in the process so that was kind of what i learned from that friendship no it did not get any better so the other thing that i did not like that he would do um is that he would the way he would treat people if i was friends with somebody that he thought was nice looking say they come up to me and they're talking to me i would introduce him and he wouldn't say anything he wouldn't say not a word to them and he would go and find their social media and follow them he's really good at that like he doesn't need much he's going to find the information but it's the part where it's like he would follow them but not say anything to them. And that people would come up to me and after he would do that, people were like, I don't like him because he did that. Like, I'm not gonna follow him back. Like you never said anything to me. And I was like, I absolutely understand that. 
And I would say stuff to him about some of that behavior because it was also like um, we would go out in public and say he sees somebody over the sh in the street that he think is cute. He would kind of like hover over them. Mind you, he is not no little dude. He's a really tall guy and big. And I think he just doesn't have an understanding of how that might come off to people and how it might make them uncomfortable. And I just think he just didn't know. And that, and that's fine. But I'm like, I got to tell you, you can't do stuff like this. And people would like tell him also because he would do a lot of things like, oh, he's taking videos of people that are attractive in public. Like they're out and about. But he's t I'm like, come on, you can't be doing all of that. It's making them, you know, you know, you know, I'm like, yeah, I get that they're out in public, but like if they're out eating and you're in this, this guy is extremely tall and big, you don't know what he's, his intentions are. We are in college and he's taking a video of you and just staring at you and not coming up to you and saying anything. And what made it even worse is any time I would talk about a guy that was doing those type of things to me and how it made me uncomfortable and I would express this to him, he would be like, yeah, that's that's absurd. But he goes and does it. And that's what makes it horrible, horrible. He didn't really apologize to me. It was months later, He, um, we were at work and he just kind of stood there and he, he didn't say anything for hours. He came into work early and like customers were kind of looking at him as I was assisting them because he was standing basically right next to me and not saying anything. Um, I left it be because he spent so many months not talking to me. And eventually he mustered up the courage to say something to me. And he was like, the reason I'm acting like this is because you know, you know, you, you have an attitude, this and this. And, I looked at him and I was like, I don't remember quite what I said, but I told him something and it made him act right after that somewhat. And our friendship never became, we never got back to where we were at because he just could not get off of that of understanding why I didn't want to be talked to like that. And that's what got me. I was like, are you serious? But yeah, I just, I don't know. It was, it hurt my feelings because I really, that was my homie. Like that was my boy. I look forward to talking to him every single day, um, texting him memes, this, this, and this, and this. But what I got from that was just kind of reflecting on, you know, what some men um, intentions are. Even though they may say they're, you know, on something else, this is what they're about. And it was just months of him, doing that that just no and for a long time while I was going through all of that with him I like I said in the video I said I said on TikTok I was like I didn't look at men for three months and I was serious like I didn't look at them in the eye I couldn't because I could see that they were the same way as him any guy that was the same way I didn't really want anything to do deal with um, I, I didn't want to be hugged, touched. I don't even care who it was. I just didn't want to be bothered. And I just wanted to think. And it was just a lot. And it was every single day he was saying something to me. And when he stopped and he was silent, <laughs> he was silent and would not talk to me. Of course, over time, I got back good. It was cool. A guy. Um, and also, take, take the, the world's condition. Um, so it's not like I go out a whole bunch. Um, I did get out of that toxic home situation maybe a couple months after all of this happened. And that was really good um, because I was very serious about getting out of that situation. He didn't. He still stayed at home. And I think that's another reason why he couldn't understand or get off the topics of the things that he was talking about. Um, he did not try to grow or anything like that but yeah that's pretty much it you know um if you would like to know how i got out of my toxic home situation got my money up and still did that while being a full-time student in college let me know i'm more than happy to make a video on that like and subscribe for 
more content like this kind of like this or whatever you guys want i will be more than willing to continue to make videos answering questions um comment below of what more do you want to see if you have any questions more about this situation or anything in general i'm like i said more than happy to make a video